for our study of the last half of Romans chapter 1. In the last session, we covered the first 17 verses in which we saw the, the introduction, and we saw that Paul said that he had a stewardship responsibility to pray and to preach. Now, in looking at verses 18 through 32, we're seeing that the world is on trial before God, and that covers all the way through chapter 3, verse 8, 118 through 38. Now, what we want to see in the remainder of chapter 1 is God's judgment upon the Gentile world, and that we see in uh, 118 through 32. And notice here in verse 18 that God's wrath uh, is upon all who hold back the truth of God in wicked living. Now, notice, verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Now, this word wrath is the Greek word orge, uh, which speaks of hatred and anger towards sin and unrighteousness. Now, God has a hatred and a uh, uh, anger towards sin and unrighteousness, and that is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Uh, it's revealed against all impiety toward God. That's the meaning of the word ungodliness and unrighteousness. That is unrighteousness of men. And the word unrighteousness speaks of injustice toward men. Uh, so mankind is having an impiety toward God and an injustice toward mankind. And these are the ones who hold the truth of truth in unrighteousness. Now this word hold literally means to retain or hold down or they hold back. Uh, so his wrath is revealed from heaven against those people who are ungodly and unrighteous and that are holding back the truth of God in unrighteousness. So we see then God's wrath is upon all who hold back the truth of God by their wicked living in verse 18. Now that is done for three reasons, as we see down through verse uh, 31, or four reasons through verse 32. Now first of all, in verses 19 and 20, we see that it's true because all people had a knowledge of God. They all knew that God was and is, and that's a knowledge that is innate in all humanity, but they reject it. Now notice in verses 19 and 20, the reason this wrath of God is revealed toward people like this is because that which may be known of God. Now, notice the two words may be is in italics. What we have here would be better rendered is. Because that which is known of God, the word known is a present tense verb, which means having been, be known now, and continue to be known. That which is always known of God is manifest in them. Now, it is manifest in the realm or sphere of the individual. In other words, in creation of conscience, all mankind knows that there is God that is there, that there has to be a supreme and superior being. Now, how is that true? For God showed it to them. God hath showed it unto them. The word hath in it are added. The word showed is manifested. God manifested it not unto, but to them. It was manifest in various ways. Now, first of all, by creation and conscience, man knew that God was. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him, the invisible things of God, because God is a spirit and spirits are invisible. So the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now, this word from would be better rendered since. That is, from the time of the creation of the world. Since the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now notice here, invisible things are clearly seen. That is, they're seen in the sense of the understanding and comprehension. How is that true? Being understood by the things that are made. They are understood by means of the things that are made are in creation. Back in the book of the Psalms, Chapter 19 and verse 1, the Word of God says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork.